Good evening and welcome to Plain Talk. Thank you very much for joining me once again as we discuss issues of some importance to Guyanese, including your good selves. A couple of days ago, popular columnist Mr. Freddy Kisun, in responding to a column from my guest this evening, suggested that he would not have carried that column and that the writer of that column was the black version of white fascism. Mr. Kisun was referring, of course, to Mr. Lincoln Lewis, our guest this evening, who is going to tell us why he thinks Freddie is wrong. Lincoln. Let me, let me You're start. You're friends. Um, let me start from the <laughs> promise that if advocating for Guyanese and to protect the rights of Guyanese, the enabling rights of Guyanese, I'll be called a fascist in any way. I will continue to do so. That will not deter me. But let me say, let me preface it by saying this to you. That any man who psychologically and intellectually is not prepared to defend the country of his citizenship or birth disqualifies himself to be called in this specific case a guy needs. Well, let's, let's put it in context. Mm -hmm. Of course, some of the, the, the viewers out there may not have um, read the columns. Mm -hmm. um, I think you, you use words, criminal elements crossing our poorest borders mm -hmm. and terrorizing citizens. Now you remember the famous speech by Donald Trump mm -hmm. as he came down the escalator that day to announce his candidacy for the presidency of the United States when he talked about drug dealers, criminals, and rapists. Mm -hmm. He also claims to be a passionate American as you claim to be a, Gren a Guyanese. Let me tell you this. Uh -huh. I approach this issue with some passion from the, from the, within the context of what many consider to be the op open borders. Mm -hmm. Trump, they talk about open borders. Obama says that he don't believe in open borders. Mm -hmm. um, the other- Trump doesn't believe in open borders, he wants to shut borders. Yes, he don't, oh, Trump. Yes, he wants to shut borders, right? that's right. Trump, want, no, no, Trump wants open borders when it comes to coming in our country. Oh, okay. Right? Okay, I see what you mean. Yes. He wants closed borders when it comes to this country. Yes. Right? Okay? So what Obama is it? Obama says that he don't believe. The other guy, um, what's his name? Um, oh, God. I, I, oh, the come presidential back candidate. Here. Current president. Uh, one of the candidates uh, for the Democratic nomination. Not Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Sanders. Bernie yes. Sanders. Say, so don't believe in it. You don't believe in open borders. They are liberals. Mm -hmm. They are liberals. Trump is a rightist. I stand on the side of liberalism. I stand on the side of principles. When you come to the question of open borders and the right, there's no principle except making money. That's the motive. And I don't vex with them. I want to tell you this. Let me tell you what urge me. I live on these coasts. When I drive the corridors between Georgetown to Enmore, be it the embankment, the railway embankment, or the public road, all the traditional Guyanese owned businesses. The mom and pop shops. Right? All of them Nearly all, now 90% of them out of business. Yeah, it's a new group of people who, we, who are in this business, who have displaced our people. Our people who are the sons of slaves, of former slaves, 
and indentured servants who have paid up for parents have paid the price here. We are standing on their shoulders. We are benefiting from them. They have been put out of business by a, by a group of people. Let's be clear. Them. Let's be clear. Yeah. Um, you have mentioned Chinese, but you probably are referring to Chinese. Chinese also served as indentured laborers in Ghana. Yes. I won't doubt that. Okay. But okay. The, the, just the, put it in those, who, those who are the Chinese indentured laborers are not the same ones who own there. Let me look at it. These are people who come in this country here. Yes, newcomers. When they, when they, when they, you, let, 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 let me, as a trade unionist, it irks me every time people come to my gate or talk, women come to my gate, that they are work from 7 in the morning to 8 in the night and no overtime or anything like that, right? No, those business people who are there, they never used to work people like that. And if I know it's what you call this kite season, this um, Easter season, they would have been making an investment, a repayment into the communities within with them. Yeah. These don't make any. So if this is the reason why I'll be called a fascist, I prefer to be called that. No, well, here, for, let, let's get this clear. Um, your comments about criminal elements crossing our porous borders and terrorizing citizens, were you referring the Chinese or Venezuelans? I am just trying. Let me give you an example. I live on these coast. I saw three men who can barely speak English coming out of Nomprel. All three of them with, with weapon in the waist. All three of them. And I'm sure of one thing. Ask yourselves who are the people at the borders who are creating a problem. I'm not saying that people must not come. You can come. But there must be a system on which you, you, you enter this country. You must have come for your, for your stewardship here. You can't enter United States or Canada without a visa. Right? They determine how many people, how many persons they are going to have entering or uh, giving um, visitors visa or giving permanency in their country. They want open borders. Do you believe in that? Well, it's not. Uh, uh, we're not talking about Americans, are we? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in terms of th those I criminal am elements. I, am, I want to crossing. tell you something. Not only the criminal elements, not only the people in the developing country. I'm talking about everybody. My letter, my let, my column, column dealt with that. Well, let's talk about the Venezuelans. Yeah. Now you know, you know, Lincoln, mm. that Venezuela opened its arms to Guyanese in the difficult. The question cases. is not opening arms, you know, Chris. No. Chris, no, you, you didn't allow me to finish my yeah. question. I right, didn't allow you because I, I, you understand me. I'm passionate <laughs> about this matter. Go on, right? Lincoln, go on. This is not about opening answer, arms. Answer I am the question saying I didn't ask. What yes. the government doing uh -huh. for, the, for them? I believe the government should do it. Should ensure that certain things happen about this guy, about this, the Venezuelans who are coming in. But we cannot have, I'm saying that if we have open borders, this is the open border that caused criminal elements to enter too. When you go to any country, you got to put your passport. They're going to check you out before you get in, right? I got a friend who was traveling the other day. And when he meet to Jamaica, they turn him back, right? He was on, on the blacklist for some reason. But I'm saying to you that we got, we, 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 we can have, enter this country there must be a system under which you enter but and a system and something to say how long you will spend is it fair to describe venezuelans who are coming to ghana because of the running from the extremely harsh hopefully temporary conditions prevailing in that country looking for food looking for shelter Looking I, for some kind of sustenance. I, I want to ask you a question. Let me answer you. Let me ask you a question. Are every guy needs criminal element? No, no. Well, well nobody has so described them. Right? I, nev I never said that all of them are criminals. I'm saying that our porous borders contribute to that too. But, but right? Lincoln, um, and you then conflated that, I would say, mm. in the, the East Coast corridor about the shops. Yeah. Now we know the nationality of those persons mm -hmm. are the Chinese. We know 
that there are serious, serious issues um, in Regent Street mm -hmm. where these persons are not, they're not registered for tax, but they're not doing any such thing. But isn't it our fault, Lincoln? Isn't it our country's fault for allowing this situation to happen? Well, here I call on the government in my same column to do something about that. I call on the government to do something. The, con the context of which I wrote this article is to say to the government, these are the problems and something has to be done. When you say the government, which arm of the government do you expect to do something? I expect the, the government must develop a clear policy and from that policy there must be program. It's the political arm of the government that has to develop that policy. Well, the government has not been particularly inspiring when it comes to development of policies. What's its labor policy? Let, let, me, let me just tell you this. What's its cultural yeah. policy? What, what, what's you its know, foreign policy? You know, when I start to talk about this matter, you know something came to my attention? My intelligence led me to a point, a place, where containers come into this country. They clear and they get to this point here. And the people who are involved are politicians who are giving the green light, who are giving these people. Let, 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 let me go back. We had the president of this country who went to um, when the convention center open and talk about from now Chinese going to get three, after three years, they're going to get citizenship. Yes, that's when President Granger. When, huh? That's President Granger. When, when, the, um, when the Constitution says, says five years. that's the story. These are the type of problems that we have, right? You can't have it for one, and you don't give it to all. They have preferential treatment. That's why these things are happening. And let me tell you, Chris, Sunday I was home. <coughs> When a man came to my gate, working with a Chinese form, the man got yarn damage. And when they send him home, he get pay for the time that he be home and so on. And when he go back, they didn't give him back the job. You know what I found out? They're paying NIS. These are serious issues. Lincoln, and you're on NIS board. Yes. That's an incrimination. I am of saying yourself. that they're not paying NIS. Right? Now, let's go back to the borders. Yes, let me come back. The best people to, to police your borders mm -hmm. is your army. Yeah. Because it poses... And they get plenty of hardware now. They're getting plenty of money. The, 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 the army is the single largest recipient of, of budget resources. Yeah. 14 billion. That's 14,000 yeah. million. Why aren't we putting... I see, I see the army people... Um, up and down the Demerara River in the fancy boats. What are they doing there? Basically, um, basically, let me say to you, what they may be getting now is what we didn't give them in the, in the past. But that in itself is an indictment on, the, on our leadership in this country. No, but we're talking about a problem now. Yeah. We've never had such a problem. None of our neighboring countries mm -hmm. has had the challenges as Venezuela is having now. Yeah. Um, it's a large country. It's a man-made problem. It is a man-made problem. Ma made by made by powerful nations, <laughs> right? Bring it and bring it to our doorstep. And this is where you know. This is where we, we 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 as a people, as a people, carry come as a group that was established to harness our political, economic, and cultural resources is failing. I but, but why are you going to CARICOM talk because about Because I am saying to you why, why? that this should have been we should not have allowed what happening in Venezuela to happen. No, but that has happened. What I am talking about Well unless we understand you, how it happened, we won't be able to solve it. No 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 because I'm gonna tell you Chris, when we talk about what what happening what happening in Venezuela, let me make this point. I it will it will not be surprising if Venezuela become a casualty and become a, a Libya. A Libya or become some other Middle East country. I will not be surprised. But when we get back to your thing about these elements crossing our porous yes. borders. 
Isn't that the function of the army? It's, it's well endowed with resources now. Now, nobody ever has as much resources as they need. What about you, man? Well, well I would assume the substantial budgetary allocation translates into human resources as well. Yeah. It isn't just on, on tanks or boats or helicopters. It's on people. You know why we get it? What's happening now is, a, is, is, is as a result of some other thing. You see when Bonham is talking about national service and say people leave the borders with it, right? Plenty of people run around and say national service must go. This way, that's just so. If we had national service, those areas would have been. But we still got the army. You get what? Why are they doing the work? That's yes, my question. I won't be able to answer that. Why they are doing the you work? Treat, you know, what are they they telling you? What are telling you about the errors that we have made? Um, what we have, you understand me? What we have created today, we're paying the price Look. for this national service that we destroy, you know? This is the price for national service that we have destroyed. The you know, you know what um, the United States tell me and, and their powers, you know what they tell us? Get rid of the military, scale down the military, get rid of the department, get rid of national service. And Mr. Hyde and Cherry Jigs on the bite. And they go and they do it. But when they're doing all those things, you know what happened? They say get rid of free education, they must, they must give free education. Mm -hmm. They also subsidizing, subsidizing um, farmers. They also get the National Guard and all these type of things. What are we doing? Unless we come to terms, Chris, we're asking, a, we're asking some questions there. Let me see to see to how we can help you answer them. <laughs> Let me tell you. Chris. I want you to answer them because my view is this. We have a profound shortage of leadership in this country. We have a leadership crisis. Yeah. Isn't it? Where is Very the leadership? So. Very much so. We have a problem. And, and until a country cannot thrive, unless it has leadership, leadership in every sector, where is it? It's missing in action. Now, I want to get back to this thing. And you talk about Burnham and Jagger. Look, Burnham has had his fair share of blame. Yeah. Probably unfair share of blame. <laughs> yeah. But he would not have stood for this nonsense that is taking place now. That kind of policy. Now, Lincoln, we have the, you see, if Granger and, and Jordan and all these people would, would stop and think. In the rural communities, whether you're talking about the hinterland part, you're talking about the black communities, Indian communities, you can't just go and find a job. So you need, you need almost some sufficiency in these communities. When you allow external forces to come in and displace everything you're destroying your country it's a fact let me let me say to you and it is the same the same understanding of the issue that prompted me to write that column let me why didn't you why didn't you respond to freddy i i did respond to him i did respond to him i raised a number of issues with him. but let me let me make this point to you um, I don't write. I don't claim to be a revolutionary. My thinkings are, are, are very revolutionary. I'm don't, I don't claim to be one. I don't write for people to like me. I write because what I believe in is grounded in principles and evidence. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm not going to read to you. I'm going to tell you, I'm in this for a long haul. I'm in this for a long haul. I'm not going to throw this issue aside. This here is about Guyanese. And let me tell you, Chris, let me tell you something. For the years I've known you, I believe we met the first time about 1980 <laughs> or 17 or 18, yeah, yeah. right? Let me tell you something, Chris. We will have differences, but we will remain comrades. Let me tell you this. I am guided 
or I'm, 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 I'm energized by the struggles of my forebears because I know where I come from. I am I'm, 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 I'm energized by all the slaves fought and I am energized all the indentured servants fought. I'm energized about how our people, our, our, our people fight colonialism. I am not going to sit down and allow a new form of colon colonizing it. But it's happening. And well, that's why if they go colonize everybody, they gonna colonize me. I'm a children, I'm a grandchildren. We're going to fight. Right? But this look, when, look when you stand up on the road. You know, we, we drive the road and we, we look at something. Look at East Coast Corridor. They're walking on the road. Every man, you, you see four guys under the theater lights. They're, they're, they're doing this survey. But then people who on the theater light there, I'm sure they're not registered survey as here. Right? Think about it. Think about our jobs that, that people are just coming in and when you go to the airport, look at who you're seeing. Think about what's going on. But, but when I said they're coming, are we prepared? People come in, <coughs> people come in because here you get eyes shout. Me and get problems with people coming. But we have to get something for our people. We the last so week I read, the, I read the, the paper where the, the company the government gave a loan or some grant for um oil, for no, oil no, management. No, it's 20 million? Right. I mean what an absurdity. <laughs> hold, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I'm saying we can at least take that and address and spend the money on the who? Old, the spend the money who? address the issue of local content. We want something from it. Let me tell you, 100 years backside mine here, right? What do we have? If Bonham the national backside, and we get some, some communities in region 10, and region, region 10 and region 6, we don't get anything. Let me talk, let me look at it. Let us start now to protect. We have the experience where we but, were, where we were shaft before. But Lincoln, talk with whom? Huh? Who is listening? Who can you talk well, with? Well, I want to tell you something. You and me are going to continue talking. Yeah, but we don't. Then we're going to listen. The younger ones come in. The younger ones come in. Let me, let me tell you. You know what he said? Bocas Guyana. You remember that story? Yeah, of course I do. BG Bocas Guyana. It wasn't British Guyana. It was Bocas Guyana because, because of only here. All the sugar estate, who do they determine what happened? That even because today, Sandwich even Parker today, says, yes. even today, some of the estates are being still the communities on the on the east coast and and quarantine. There's east coast, west coast, Bobby's and quarantine. They are still being drained by the sugar estate. Mm -hmm. The canals in the sugar estate still draining those communities. You got to do that. What I'm saying. That since we have, are we not guided by history? We don't care. You see, my problem is this: we, you have a, you have a government that ought to be. But are you vote for the government? You elect. I say you vote for the government. Let me take it back. You don't vote for the government. But let me say to you, you participated in the process. I did vote for this, but A B N U F. So yeah, I did. I, I we are saying you participated in the process. That caused Mr. Granger to be leave and and Noses Nagamoto, they told them to be leaving. No, but the whether government. we voted or and not. Hold on, hold on. And no, you have Mr. Jack Dio. You, know, you invite me, man. Means you guess, man. <laughs> okay, go on, go on. Don't bro. stop me, man. Means you guess. Yes, and Mr. Jack Dio as the, as the um, leader. The opposition. Let me tell you something. Many of our politicians hmm. are not guided by history. You not see, guided by? By history. They don't understand what we're doing. I tell you something. As I talking to you, you know Crichlow statue inside the uh, lands of the parliament building? I will tell you something. You have 65 persons in the National Assembly. And I'm going to tell you something. You'll find one of them who don't know that it's Crichlow statue. You can't be serious. I'm telling you, man. The past and every time. Because... They are not the politicians of that of that era that you expect. You have, when people tell you say, um, 
comparing Burnham to some to these guys. I just tell them no. I was telling the man up to today, the man tell this man like Burnham and this and me said he something. Rest yourself, Burnham had a brain. He had a brain. He was also very patriotic. He was very nationalistic. Yeah. Third, and and also he was an outstanding South South third world politician yeah. and leader. Yeah. We ain't got anybody like that anymore. We don't make men like them any longer. Is that the fault, fault of the political system, the political parties? You know, in the, in the past, in the PPP, the PNC, they used to have political education in the yeah. parties. Now you don't have, you have hustlers. I want to tell you something. I heard a senior politician in this government saying to people, we don't have an ideology. I, like, you don't understand what is an ideology? The man is saying that he don't believe in anything. Yes. He don't believe in anything. And I'll tell you something. When people tell me that you need to be pragmatic, when it <laughs> comes to politics prag and people's business, pragmatism is opportunistic. Yes. It's, it's, it's just blowing in the wind. wind. Yeah. And as the wind blows, you go. Yeah. Where did we, where did we, you're talking about history. Where did we depart from that kind of fundamental, philosophical, ideological, nationalistic? At the death uh, of Burnham, we depart from the ideological. During the height, we were still, we were still pushing nationalism. When Chedi came to power, he tried. But he had committed himself too much to the West. And the IMF. And the IMF. Right? The things, all the things Chedi condemned, the economic things in opposition. He come to power and do that. Because he, he, he gave he, assurances to the Western powers that, look, if I win, he put, this well, is how yes, What he did was to put the acquisition of power as priority and the ideological direction of this country behind. That's what he did. And it, that's an error. And this is this is where this is where the, this is where the failing of man. He, 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 he considered the power, the political power more hmm. important. Or being president more important um, than the economic direction. And the ideological, ideological. But, but let me ask you a question and this touches on your own Self, you mentioned Critchlow. Mm -hmm. Critchlow, man of international stature. Yeah. I don't think Guyanese understand yeah. what a what a man Critchlow was. Yeah. Critchlow was a big cricketer. Yeah. You know, you, Critchlow was an yeah. outstanding, was uh, outstanding. You had Critchlow. You had Polydor yeah. in the TUC. Yeah. Are we producing any of them? Is is Lincoln Lewis worthy of being on that? Pantheon among the pantheon I am, I am of not, trade union leaders. I am not the person who measure myself. Um, history shall measure me. Uh -huh. But I tell you something, I'm standing on the shoulders of those two great men. Um, let me give you an example of something that I, I experienced I've had. A man came into my um, came into Kuchlaliwa College one day and the man said to me, I his mere appearance, I recognized he was a foreigner. He said, good afternoon, sir. I said, good afternoon, and he started talking. He said, I come here because I want to know this building. I see Critchlow Labor College. Is this, is this college named after you brought Nathaniel Critchlow? I said, sure. He said, that was a great man. He said, I'm an Australian. Mm -hmm. I'm here and I'm, as a tourist, and I observe. Critchlow was offered the opportunity to play Cricket in Australia. Yeah. Professional cricket. Yeah. You, you, you're aware of that? Yes, I'm aware of that. So we talk, the guy said to me, he said, you know, this is the man that is responsible for us having trade union mm -hmm. in the British Empire. Right? Yes. This man. And he said, so I said, well, he said, oh, you, you have a photograph of him? I took him and I said, that's the portrait of the man. He said, can I take a picture? And the guy ran back to the car, pick up his camera and come back. I'm saying, people recognize what Critchlow have done. But the guy, well, Guyanese, 
people don't like when you talk. Who sang the song, We Are Our Heroes? Who are our heroes? Oh. What are the words? Yeah, We Are Our Heroes. Um, Martin. Martin, Dave Martin. Martin. Yeah. yeah. Where are they? Um, Where are our leaders? Well, we, we've already said we hardly have leaders. Where are our heroes? Well, I know where mine are. I know Christian Palido. They are mine. Yeah. They make it possible. And I tell you something, when they, when people cross the trade you and say, what are they doing? I just turn to them and say, so long they are, they are some scrupulous employers, they will always be made for the trade union. Now, we can have an endless discussion on this business of the inward migration and the free reign that seems to be given. Mm -hmm. Now, without any reciprocity, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem people coming into my country mm -hmm. if I have the same right, if my country people have the same right to go into their country. Mm -hmm. If they can come and set up a business wherever they want, we must be able to do the same thing. Yeah. Those things don't happen. Where, no. where's our foreign minister? Where's our minister mm -hmm. of trade? Where's our president? Those are the things that you, those are fundamental questions. Yeah. Unless you can say, that look, we need them more than they need us. That's the impression we give him. When people, when, an, when a man comes here and he opens a business and um, connected to the oil industry, bauxite or gold, right? You know, when, it, when, when, you, when, you, when you ask them, when you raise the issue about tax, taxes, they tell you more jobs they produce, or yes, more jobs yes. that you create, right? Can, should we just settle for jobs? the low paying jobs when you're carrying away the resources of this country yeah, yeah. something has to be done what kind of policy would you like to see it's one thing to say what is bad mm. and what Bonham wouldn't have had and what he wouldn't have tolerated what would you like to see in a modern era a WTO era an era of of free trade and international oh, relations. Don't tell me about WTO and everything. And to get carry United States to the to WTO. Yes. Right? They won and they refused to honor the award. Mm -hmm. Right? You have the you have the ICE, the, the, the International Criminal Court um, Court. Right? United States said their people will never go. Be, to right? Will never go. But they want to determine what was happening in our country. Right? I'm saying to you, this thing, whatever country I want to, whatever country I want to see, I want to see a, I want to see a country where everybody will come here, and every country we deal with will respect our sovereignty. So, what would you do with a country like, like the United States? What that said, that says, look, I don't, I want to be above international organizations, including the World Court. Yeah, mm. no, but it's happening. I say, okay. They're doing it. Yes. I want to tell you something. They can't fix your own problem. Why do they want to fix me? You got to ask yourself, why do they want to fix me? But Lincoln, let's face it. Three quarters of your Guyanese would probably still run to that country if I, they had the opportunity. I don't have a problem. I have, I have children who live outside this country. In that country? I have one that lives in the United States. I have one living in England. Right? But... It's their choice. If the question is not where one goes. The question here is the principle. How would we you deal have, with... There must be equal opportunity. And, and reciprocity. Yeah. But how would you deal with the, the, the Chinese, the Brazilians, and, and all of this? Because it's not only the Chinese. You've got sections of Rob Street and Regent Street that the Brazilians control. Yeah. Um, you got certain sectors that the Colombians maybe control. I want to tell you something. Yes. How would you deal with those things? How do you formulate a policy? Let me let me point out to you, Chris. You are asking all the time when I say we. Let mm. me tell you this. You know one of the reasons why I remain a trade unionist because this is what I am good at articulating the plight of people and make recommendations as to what needs to be done. In this case, I am going to articulate. I am I'm articulating the plight. You are asking me to make the recommendation. Let me tell you what we Our political, our policy makers who are our political leaders got to sit down 
and address the plight of the Gahini society. For instance, when both the president and the, and the opposition leader need to sit down on national issues and if possible bring stakeholders on board to have things done. Both sides, when they govern, believing that it is my time now to make decision absent of the people. Absent of the people. What Mr. Jagdio did when he was in government, to a large extent, is the same thing that has been done. But I'm asking you what, you what you would like to see done to, what to I would deal like with to some see, of the I ills. want to see them to sit down and address the concerns of people in this society. I give them a 19 point. Both Mr. Jagdio and President Winchell. Give them a 19 point. At the top of the list says, we want to, the first thing on it, they said that we want industrial growth in this country. And industrial court? Yes. You see that as the number one problem? Well, labor sees it as the first thing for labor to fix a number, the, um, number of persons who are not in arm, um, who may not be represented by a union, they can go to that industrial court and uh, get redressed mm -hmm. fast, right? So we see it as our first line. From, from, a, from a labor perspective? From a labor perspective. Yes. Okay. We see, we also ask that we address the issue of our natural resource sector. Where people are coming in, we should say, if we want foreign investors into this year. Like we had the Russians in the, in the, in the mines who beat up the arm. Mm -hmm. In the gold mine that beat up Guyanese, put the on thing and so on. We got to decide. How we gonna treat you? What people? All these people who come in and get what we call tax concessions. Well, they are getting tax concessions. The local people who have paid a price ban and bread here can't get the same tax concession like them, which makes the playing field not equal. Those who are coming in are more equal than us. We want to see the law. You, you keep saying sitting down and talking, but talking about what? Talking about these issues, all the impact. No, but I'm asking you. I'm asking you what sort of policies? Because this is about Guyana and Guyanese. You will dip, you will get different policy on different issues. Well, that's what I'm asking. Well, right? name name some of those. That's so what I'm, what I'm saying to you, we need like a foreign. When, as I talk about the natural resource sector. We need a, like a foreign investment commission of that need, uh, that we, 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 with the responsibility that when people come in here to invest in, a, in, in, in gold and diamond or bauxite, and then, the government must say whether you can come, whether we need it or not. We need it or not. We must see that. We must be properly advised. And that must advise. There must be a fight, and those things must go to the national state. Not just people just walking. And Chris Ram get um, 14 blocks, and Chris Ram sign a deal with some company from Croatia or somewhere. And they come in and they start the thing, and next thing is they, they carry the gold out. And they, they, when they, are, when they are, are, are approached, they were, you were told about paying taxes, they tell you that we create 200 jobs. Those things got to stop. For instance, health. This should be a clear policy about, about health and what we're going to tackle. We can't continue. Let me tell you, Chris. We can't continue when, when my brother children or my sister children or my friend children get sick that we pass in a basket around to carry them overseas. For instance, we get this but, but listen, you're pointing out. I am saying to you, Chris, 
What what policy you need? Well, you need a policy to address that. Well, that what, it should not what, that, in that fact, the what, health sector what in must, fact, must deliver what, for the people. What in fact you need is an effective government. Well, because no, I mean, part of the the role of a government is to formulate policies. Yeah. And it's to execute policies. Yeah. So if you don't have policies, if you haven't formulated policies, then there's nothing to execute. And it, it's, it's really shocking that we should be talking about these basic, basic matters. These are human rights issues. You know. This question of health and education them are human rights issues. And the right for Guyanese to have a fair share of their economy. Yeah. Now, we have had, in June 2015, we learned that we had the largest oil discovery in the world. Up to this day, despite the law, a 1986 law, that says, makes very specific requirements about local content, we have not been able to pass a single piece of primary or secondary legislation on local content. Now we're going to borrow money to come and do what? Things that you can sit down, you can and, and sit down with a couple informed people and arrive at a policy. It's not that difficult. It's not rocket science. It's, Guyana is not the only, it's not the first country to have gone through these things. I, why are we why are we struggling on such basic matters of government not governance just basic matters of government why because we get a number of men and women who may be bankrupt that is the problem right now when you say bankrupt bankrupt intellectually you know, i want to tell you no this. i'm asking you I want, you I want to tell you this you ask me a question i want to tell you something it's only today i was telling a man who was telling me about the lawyers. And I was telling them, you get plenty of people went to law school, but they're not lawyers, right? Look, you're talking about my brothers and sisters. There, yes, right? I'm talking about them. I'm talking about them. I, you want me to talk about the politicians? <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing Ma you. Many of them are lawyers as well. <laughs> well, no, me, but, but, but what's the point about lawyers? Um, what because, you know, we have some of the worst jokes I've ever told us about lawyers. Well, I don't want, sharks and I all want to tell you a joke about them, but I yes. just tell you. I just What's your problem with lawyers? Um, I, I believe at times um, their thoughts are not buttressed by what the desires of society. They don't represent society, they represent their clients. No, no, but I tell you what, you know, you can't work for me. Who is a liberal and work for you with a capitalist at the same time? Well, you'd be amazing how flexible lawyers are. Right? You can't work for me today and then tomorrow you work for me. The thing about the, it's about the currency, Jack. It's about currency? Yes. Well, the politicians are saying the same thing. It's about the currency. No, no, no. But the politicians <laughs> have a public duty. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm, glad you raised that. I'm glad you raised that. What do you think about this conflict of interesting affecting? Minister Cathy Hughes and then the, the, the minister, um, uh, the housing ministers. I, wa I want to tell you something. You are touching on a very important issue. It was over the weekend. I was writing an article. I can't remember which one. Though, but I talk about it. But let me tell you this for them. This is amazing in this country. Let me just use this one as an example. The life of the government with Janet Jigan came to an end before its five years. Yes. Donald Ramatar come to an end. Tell me, the parliamentarians that we get did not see it fit to put a system in place that whenever a government falls, or for some reason a government falls, what happens after that, right? 
and look at this, the, 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 the fiasco with the fighting in the court over who will stay and who will go. It tells me, that in itself tells me. No, but I was asking about conflict of yes, interest. Yes, conflict of interest. Yeah. These rules, these rules about conflict of interest or the guidelines, they are absent and what we're going to continue to do is argue whether right, right or wrong. Right? You, know, you know, Lincoln, and you cost lawyers, mm. but if you read the Parliament standing orders, yeah. it particularly says what happens in the case where our standing orders, standing orders how how matters relating mm. to the National Assembly mm. are dealt with. Yeah. It says in such and such a case, this is what happens. The part of the problem you have, and you, 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 we're going off, this issue of democracy. Mm. Democracy isn't litigated in court. Yeah. Yes, the court is the final interpreter of the Constitution. Yeah. But if on every single decision mm -hmm. you have to go to court, simply because the Constitution doesn't say it. Let me tell you this. You know, and you took part in the Constitutional Reform Commission, and don't tell me you didn't, because the, the publication shows the TUC made about, I think, three submissions. We actually doubled the size of the Constitution in the Hordmanson Accord yeah. um, parliamentary reform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It hasn't got us anywhere because how do you deal? You talk about this culture, and, you know, the Burnham and and and, and um, Jagan and and Polydor and the other leaders. How do you deal with a situation where democracy is not ingrained in us? Where what we think democracy is elections. We think power is all that matters. We think power is about government, or government is about power. Isn't that our problem? It's one of our problems. Why don't well, you? Me, why wouldn't you want to be a politician? Why me want to be a politician? No, I'm asking you why. Be because they will throw me out. The I will walk out, or they throw me out the first first quarter. Is it because they're an intolerable bunch? Well, because I don't believe that they believe in anything, but themselves. Well, therefore intolerable to you. Yeah. But let me tell you something. I want to move away from this where you raise your son. I want to move away from. Let me tell you something. Which one? Which one? Uh, the you way you just raised there. Let me tell you something. You see the Constitution? I've always argued that we need constitutional change. You know what we need? We need education for the people to, for the masses to hold them accountable. Right? Plenty of people don't, you tell them a constitutional change. What is it you're changing? They don't know in the Constitution. And let me tell you further. It's not the Constitution bad. But I thought you just now said we don't have what happens in I said, I never said Constitution. I'm but not referring goes, to Constitution. No, I am no saying six, no why, we don't, why we don't deal with laws and so forth emerging from the Constitution. They don't pass law. This Constitution says, you know what it said? Any one of any MP can carry a bill to the National Assembly. Right? to do, make a law or so on. These guys don't carry it. Ask yourself, unless there's a, something that is agreed upon by the opposition and the PPP and the, um, and the, 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 um, the government. Well, not quite, uh, not quite. I, I, I nearly I, all of them. No, 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 seriously. The legislation, and you know this guy um, from the AFC that tried to get legislation, this marijuana matter. Yeah. And the government wouldn't practice, wouldn't allow him. Yeah. The government says unless but it comes he continue, to But he, he continued to sit there. Yes, yes. So you tell me, I go in with a legislation, I sit down there, and I represent him, the interests of labor, and I go in with a legislation, they can tell me I can't come with it. Let them vote against it. Me, let me tell you something. But there's no excuse. There's no excuse for, for things like that. I become intolerable at, at, at issues of that nature. Don't tell me that the rest don't want it. Put it to them. Fight it. I, I come back to this thing. Um, as you said, the Constitution, for all its faults, and look, Lincoln, there is not a single ideal document. I, think I don't even, expect it to be ideal. I think even the Ten Commandments have flaws. <laughs> <laughs> the Ten Commandments is there for man. 
Yes. Right. Well, you see, it's over man. What about <laughs> over man? No, right? but so I am saying we don't have a democratic culture. Lincoln, and let me tell you this. People don't realize this. A political party is the least regulated entity in this country. And they are the ones who move from political party to government. You have some jokers, absolute jokers, incompetence, yeah. who move from zero to ministers. Yeah. Who can't even recognize conflict of interest yeah. if, it, if it shines on the Starbuck market clock. Who don't understand, as you said, who that statue is Hubert Nathaniel Critchlow, or who the man is. You don't have people who understand the history of our country. They don't know. You hear talk about, um, oh, let's go back to first past the post. Do they know what were the challenges with first past the post? Do they know the history of this country? Do they know the history of, of slavery, the, 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 the indentureship, how the, how the estates were, were constructed? Do they understand our natural resources? Do they know anything? other than to grab power and to grab the economic resources that power allows them to enjoy? Why? I understand. I share your pain. But at least I get one person who will walk with me on this one. Here. This thing is frustrating. Yeah. I want to, I you want have to, some clowns as ministers, I want real clowns. I want to tell you this. I want to tell you something. Guyanese got to wake up. And unless we wake up, we are go unless we wake up now, we are going to wake up one morning and see that the political determination in this country as to run it, is being done by a group of people who have money, who have money and real money, and those monies come off of our, our natural resources. The, <laughs> the cultural dynamics of this country is being determined by other groups. And the history of this country, of the contribution of, of the peoples of this country, would be totally wiped out. You know, you remind me recently, you're a Kaichu News columnist now. You saw this article by Kiana Wilberg on which Mark Bino, mm. the head of energy, said this is more than six months after he was appointed as director of petroleum that he did not read the petroleum contract with SO Exploration and Production Guyana Limited. What kind of gross incompetence is that? It's dangerous, Lincoln. It's not only incompetence. We're not talking about individuals. You are talking here about entrenching the, and consolidating foreign control of your natural resources. Anyone who knows the petroleum legislation in 1939, it says the ownership of petroleum hydrocarbon resources, which includes petroleum, vests in the people of the country. I want to tell you this. Let me tell you something. You know what you're talking about? Let me tell you, you are right, Chris. Bauxite. Bauxite in Jamaica, all reserves are held by the Jamaica Bauxite, Bauxite Institute, a state entity. Yeah. In Guyana, let me go back to tell you, Brassington, Brassington, sign a document and unweigh the reserves in Linden, some of the reserves in Linden, to the... Um, we have the same thing in manganese. To, yes, to 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 um, to was Bosai, not Bosai um, the the um the Canadian company that had owned it, mm -hmm. and within months they went and they made a windfall, sold it. Yes, yes, and yes. they made a windfall from it. Well, Lincoln, right? What I'm saying to you, 
is our, our, our public officials, our politicians, are not conscious of the damage that they're doing to this country. That's why I said you're clowns. You know? No, and it's happening in, it's happening all the time. Now, we, we know sand, bauxite, um, manganese, you name it. And we don't, we fight for power in Georgetown and people are raiding us, our country, yeah. whether, whoever, or oh, they come in all forms. But let me Not only you, so those who, who cross, as you said, our purple, our um, porous borders. Some of them come legally with jackets and tie and, and yeah, um, briefcases. You, you, you are so right. That is what is happening. And happening to us every day. One of the things I said in my, in my, in my 19th point, I said to them, well, you can have um, what we call... Um, PR election at the national level. Those people, those MPs in the regions, let them go, let me go first past the poll there. Yeah. Let me go first past the poll. Because if the people in Region 6 elect the MP, the two or three MPs from there, they will come and represent and argue for resources for the region. Absolutely. But if they depend on freedom the House and part. Congress place to determine if they're going to be on the list, then they will not fight for anything for the, for the people. And as you say, if they have no ideology, they have nothing to fight for. Yeah. Chris, I am... Um, you say you won't give it up, you know? This you said you're not giving up. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. I want to tell you something when people... Ask me when am I going to um, retire? I always say, this is all I know. And when I have somebody who prepared to stand up and fight, I will run away and give them the way. But Good. I hope that person comes soon. I am looking for that person comes soon. I ain't looking for one. I'm looking for plenty. I'm looking for, I want to see you. Know, I want to see us come back to the era where we can stand up as leaders, not only the trade union, but outside of the trade union. But somewhere. we kill, we kill young people. Look, you, you and I were talking with Sharma Solomon, um, Ms. Kisun from, from Linden. Yeah. Where are they? Those, those were really, really great potentials as leaders. What has happened to them, Lincoln? Um, well, politicians feel that, or political leaders feel that they ought not to be questioned. Well, I'll tell you something. Let well, me where is the, where let me the accountability leave, then? Let me leave this with you. Let me leave this with viewers. Many of us must remember we are going. Those people are coming. And if we don't treat them well, don't expect them. Well, my, my, my fear is that these older folks are destroying the young people in this country, are providing no leadership. When you look at some of the legislation that has been passed, it, it has nothing about youth in mind. Not that it have anything in, in old people in mind. It, all it seems to have, in my view, is how can I enhance my economic well-being at the expense of the people of this country? That's what I'm saying. We need a philosophy, a clear philosophy. We need programs. We got to do that. And let me tell you this. We got to stop this thing here. Where we just vote for vote sake. All right, Lincoln. Um, they're signaling the end. Thank you so much for a lively discussion. It is not the end, Chris. End of this is program. It, yes. It's finished. Uh, we will have, have a, a new... A new uh, our friends and viewers, have a good night. Lincoln, thank you so much for joining me. Happy days. Good. good.